Alrighty, we're up to number 70, which is going to be Hollywood Maurice Dean. He says, he was driven to the hotel. He arrived sometime after one. Okay. After partying out in West Chicago. He was in a tan colored van parked on the side parking lot. Um, him and Chalo have a little child together. He remembers Kanika drinking heavily from a Hennessy bottle while at the party. He remembers her sitting near the bed, 20 to 30 people. He said employees knocked once or twice to turn the music down. Kanika was leaving. She was drunk and stumbling. And then left with Maya and Monifa. Uh, one of the females came back into the room after a short time looking for the keys in the cell phone. Then, then oops. Let's see. Then, 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 where I lost my place. Then left the room again. I, he, Maya and Monifa returned advising that Kanika was not in the hallway and they weren't sure where she went. He left the party between four and five. So let's check him words out. Got there sometime after one and left between four and five. All right. All right. This is at 2.53. They're coming in. This is Hollywood, so yep, it's after one o'clock. All right. There he is right there. There they are right there. Hollywood's gonna step up right here, I think. There he is. Okay. They proceed to go up to the party. Then, should be coming out here directly. Maya Monifa. There they are. There's Hollywood. Gonna come back get the validation ticket and then they're gonna leave for good. So I guess what he said was right on the head. All right, the next one is 89, <clears throat> and it's Quan, Dequan Wilson. He said um, around 2 o'clock, his brother, his older brother, and his little brother was already, oh, I'm sorry, other brother, was already at the party. He said he knew Kanika for a long time, and then, let's see. Everybody was cool and chill and blah, blah. He stated that Kanika, one of the girls came in and said Kanika was missing. He didn't see Kanika leave, though. 
And he didn't really pay attention who came back to say that. So he did realize some people took off to go look for her. He doesn't remember when he left the party, but he left when his brother, Daryl, left. And then he made arrangements for his brothers to go do their interview. That's all he had to say. They showed up at 3.02. I think I showed this in the other video anyway. So I'm just going to show this one clip of footage. This is Daquan. This is Daryl. They brought along friends because they are in mixed company, to be, put it bluntly. Okay. All right. The next one is 93, which is Daryl. Said he's known Kanika since she was a baby. He stated that it was around 2 when they got there. It was 25, 30 people. He didn't know Kanika was going to be there and that they were cousins. He said around 3 o'clock, Kanika and her friends were getting ready to leave. And then a few seconds later, one of them came back in to look for Kanika's phone. And then about 30, 40 minutes later, after Kanika left, that's when Daryl and Kwan left. He talked to the girls for a few minutes, but they didn't, you know, make a big deal out of it. Nobody made a big deal out of it because Kanika is known for doing this all the time. So he said about 30, 40 minutes after Kanika left is when him and his brother left. All right. We got him leaving at 3.54. It's Quan. Daryl's going to come. The three late ladies also left with them. There's a lot of speculation that used to go on about what, what was going on down here. I believe this girl right here was throwing up because of the way that these two girls are going to jump back. And she was acting pretty drunk. You watch them here, they're going to kind of jump. They're going to scoot back. Like this one's like, I ain't getting near it. I ain't getting near it. See how she, they're jumping back like she's puking or something. Puking, pissing, something. There, see. She hugging up on everybody. I got a feeling she was puking. Okay. They deal with the drunk girl for a few minutes. She can't make up her mind what she's doing. Hugging and loving on everybody like drunks like to do. And then this girl said, oh, I had enough already. Thank you very much. Oh, girl, give me love. Okay, come on, let's go. Everybody, let's get on out. She's paying for the parking. And she's waiting for y'all to go because she don't want to get near you. There you go. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. So that matches up. All right. Next up is 107. Lawrence Johnson, better known as Cocky. Since he lives in Green Bay, Wisconsin, they did theirs by telephone with him. He said he's known Kanika for several years. She's because he still parties coming back to town. He said that they got to the hotel about 2.45 to 3 o'clock, which we saw that was correct. He was with Hollywood and Smacks, whoever else this is supposed to be. He was the one driving the brown, the tan van. He said the group departed at 4 to 4.30, which we saw that. They went back over to Holman and Florney to party some more. He's a vice lord. And let's see. He saw Kanika drinking out of a cup, but he didn't pay attention to her. He, and he was drinking when he walked in, so he wasn't paying attention to time either, apparently. All right, the next one up is 108. Now, the reason why I'm going over all these like this real quick is because I, not just to to show that they're telling the truth for the most part, give or take, but I want you to pay attention who they're mentioning and who they're not mentioning. All right, see, 108 is, uh, is, it, is it Dwayne? Let me see. 
Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Knew Kunika for a long time. He was with Hollywood. Cox, Max. Yeah, this is uh, Wayne Anderson. Sticks. He's a vice lord. He was in... Uh, they came in a brown band. Oh no, this maybe this is Isaiah. No, I think Isaiah's was last. That's right. Anyway, it's 20, 25 people. Security knocked a couple of times. Now that tells me because of them knowing that the security came through the door, that means security came back a couple of times. He said that he saw Kanika and the two girls leave the room. They were playing dice. They were fumbling through the dice game. Um, he left. They left about four o'clock, and he remember seeing the girls in the lobby that they were looking for Kanika. Okay. All right. Next one up is 138. Jonathan Johnson. Sticks. Uncle John. Three Breeze. Cousin. Uncle. Guy. <laughs> He's a quiet one. Spends most of his time locked up, though. All right. He made contact with. And this is a thing here. Check it out. When I was trying to figure out who's narratives whose documents belong to who or whatever um jonathan johnson's you can see the name almost literally through the black through here a couple of these was like that so that helped out a lot all right uh they made contact with Jonathan, while they were leaving the residency of Miguel. We to this day do not know why they were at the residency of Miguel's or why they felt the need to put it in the documents because we cannot find Miguel on the footage or anybody speaking of Miguel being there. So anyway, Jonathan walks up to the cops. He says, hey, I heard y'all looking for me. Says, yeah, so let's do this. And he says he's known Kanika for a while. They got to the hotel about 2 o'clock. He said he saw the invite from Brubri. He rode with Smax, Cocky, X, and Wood. He forgot about Wayne. Let's see. She was drinking Hennessy. There was more than 20 people. The last time he saw Kanika was when she was leaving the room. She appeared to be drunk. He said um, he eventually left around four with the same people that he left, had gotten there with. He's self-proclaimed Goody Mob Vice Lord, and they took a picture of him. However, we don't have that picture in the file that was given to us. Okay. Next one is 139. This is going to be... This is Smacks. Smacks... <clears throat> I found through his mama and his brother. I didn't catch that they had left his last name, Love, in here until after I found his brother because I thought his brother was actually him. But then I got it all figured out. This was like around Christmas 2017. All right. Love was with friends at the party in Chicago out west. He stated that X and Sticks, and Cocky, and Dean, and Wayne. So they wanted to go to the party, and that uh, Hollywood's girl was going to be there. They got there around 3 o'clock, so he'd ride on the button. Kanika was there with a couple of her friends. And he recalled them leaving shortly after he had arrived. That's on the spot on the money right there. He said she acted like she was kind of sick. He remembers a couple of the friends come back in, and then they exited again because they kept stepping through the dice game. About 4 o'clock, they went back to the city with the same people he came with. He's a self-admitted member of the Goody Mob Fraction of the Vice Lord Street Gang. He had his picture taken, but he, we didn't get that in the file. All right, last but not least, number 140 is going to be probably one of the most argumentative people 
in this case as far as who they were. And for me, it was very, very simple. All you had to do was read the document. What gave it away for me was he drove his BMW. I was cussed out by many other people. Two really big YouTubers cussed me out, told me when they were saying that X was somebody else. And I said, he doesn't have a BMW. They point blank said, what the hell does a BMW have to do with who it is? That was my first clue to realize that other people who said they were researching simply were not. That's where I started paying attention more. The ones that are just showing up little screenshots that are mixed match with different water marks on it from different software, they're getting that from other people's channels if they're taking it. And they'll sit there and they'll tell you, oh, I got the footage, I got the whole thing, I got the whole case. No, they don't. That's why they don't know when they say misinformation like, um, we don't know where this person was for this amount of time. Yes, we do. It's just a matter of research. And it frustrates me, not because saying that uh, one of us is doing more than the other. It's because you are putting out a false narrative. Then those of us that are putting out, and there's many of us that are putting out factual narratives, we get cussed out by your people. Tell us we're not J for K. We're the ops. We're racist. We're all kinds of things. It's ridiculous. Anyway, after they did Jonathan's, they uh, saw a bunch of people in the group was Kobe Baker, X, and Isaiah Love, Smacks. They did the, his interview. Kobe advised that he has seen Kanika in the neighborhood but doesn't really know her that well. He says they got to the hotel between 2 and 3. He drove to the party with Sticks and Wayne, which is going to be Jonathan and Wayne, which had both previously been interviewed. Okay. Kobe, which that's another one here, that if you had the document because you actually downloaded it, you would see the names. Not just screenshots off of YouTube because you can't do what I just did with screenshots off of YouTube. Alright. Kobe said he drove his BMW to the party. Which, by the way, I found him because he was actually... Right about the time of this party, a little bit before this party, he sold his old BMW and got a new BMW. But they were both the same color, just a newer model which was a dark, charcoal-colored BMW. Cocky drove his van. Kobe stated that Hollywood, you can see the M, Maurice, Dean, and Smacks were in Cocky's van. They entered from the side door, proceeded to the ninth floor. Kobe got his name X from Jonathan Johnson back in 2015 because he liked to pop a lot of ecstasy. By the way, I found the, the post on that. So, and, and as far as Xavier, Rico's brother, being called X, no. He's called Goody Boy X. There is a difference between being called X and Goody Boy X. Because if you'll notice, all these boys, these guys have names a lot of times similar. Um, Chester Mob is one is it Chester Mob Sosa, Chester Mob Braun, just you know, there's, then there you got the Sosas, you got Sosa this and Sosa that. So you have to use their full name that they've given themselves, or else you will be misidentifying people. Kobe Baker's name is just straight X for the drug, the pill, whatever you want to call it. He's a self proclaimed goody mob. Fraction Vice Lord. There was 20, 30 people at the party and everybody was drinking and smoking and having a good time. He says he remembers Kanika leave with a girl. He remembers a female came back in the room afterwards and said Kanika was lost and couldn't find her. But he don't know which girl it was because he don't really know those girls. Which is what Molifa said that she didn't know those guys. 
for the most part. Him and his group left around four. They took a photo of him and they didn't pass it along in the FOIA request. And that'll be it on those. What I'm wanting y'all to notice is, like I said, who's being mentioned and who's not being mentioned. And keep in mind, I'm not going to play them in this video, but keep in mind the 2020 lives and the actions of the girls. Because if you'll remember, um, during the lives, for the best part that you can remember, um, Irene and, Ch and Sakara and Chalo, they weren't running stuff. Like they made it sound in their 2020 lives. And we're going to get into that right now. All right, just to refresh who all's here, we got the four with Irene. We got the three with uh, Dorian plus nephew. We got the three with Kanika, the three with Kelly, and the four guys that are still here with uh, T.Y., which makes us to a total of 18. Now, Little Ty's cousin, we're not sure when he left, but he should still be here at this point because we don't see him leave. All right, now, those 18 plus the three with uh, Davion makes 21 because the other three have gone home at 3 o'clock. Now, we add six vice lords to it. We come out to 27. Take the 27 plus the three lovely late ladies, the two Wilson brothers, and their two friends. We've got 34. All right, the 34 plus the five guys that came in with Jarvis makes 39. But remember, this is the time frame that I need everybody to make sure they're keeping notes on. From 310 to 315-ish, okay? Now, I've added this in here just to make this point. It's 325. Anybody arriving after the two older Wilson brothers, Daryl and Quan, should not have ever seen Kanika. Now, this is being added in for your own visual, mental uh, understanding. That we got 39 plus the 4, which is 43. But this is where they were at. At Kanika, the three guys, and the cousin. Okay, even though Kanika's technically missing already, I'm adding these two in. Bri came back, and then we got the gray hoodie, which is Jared Coley. So we're at 45 like camel do i know when when people are smoking weed in the room yes i've had to go and inquire they're like no we're not smoking do we say anything that all depends man you sharing weed nobody cares about because we know that they're not going to be causing any trouble after they're just going to be sitting around and watching movies and raiding the mini bar that's the clientele we want so just be a nice all right on this clip here i had no idea because in the title it doesn't say where it's at but i'm watching it and i'm like I recognize this place. I know where they're at. Let me show you. This hand. We've been walking around downtown San Antonio. We just finessed our way into this hotel. We walked into the uh, underground level, got on the elevator, with some guests who like were staying here and they scanned their card and sent us up. So I don't know what hotel this is, but it's hella nice. And we really be out here. So we found out this place has a sky pool. We've got no idea how to get there though. Currently stuck on the 11th floor without a room key. <laughs> so <laughs> we just we just got somebody to scan us into the pool. Turns out the pool is closed. <laughs> so that was a little awkward. We're gonna have to figure out how to get out of here. How to get down into the lobby because I think you need a room key to do so. This is kinda sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> My purpose for showing these is to show there are ways to get in and out of a hotel without being seen. And you don't have to have a card. Even though the doors 
may be locked. And I'm trying to show you some examples of how it's done. Wait for someone to open the elevator for us. Yeah. You need a key. That's how we got lucky last time. That's how we got lucky last time. You don't have to go to like tap your way to fix it. We're not gonna be able to use it. You need a key though? We can't get out. Hey. Oh shit, we're going up somewhere. Oh cool. <laughs> we go. Hey wait, is it possible if somebody on the 11th floor calls in the elevator and we go? Yeah, yeah that might be possible. That's probably what's happening. Five, oh, wait, 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 wait. Too many of us just gonna be hot. Going down. Oh, hey, can we use it for some reason? You won't be able to get back in. Really? Try to get back in after you. Try to get back in after you exit. Alright, let's go. <laughs> you see? Hey, all right, let's go. All right, late sound. All right, peace, guys. Okay, my point is right here. As long as you got somebody from the inside to open the door, you can come back in that way. Or you can set something by the door, like the wet floor sign, like they do in the dock area. So y'all get my drift. Okay, y'all remember in the first part when we were on this scene. And I kept telling y'all y'all gonna need to take note, write it down, because I need y'all to remember some of these things. Okay. Just gonna put it in park. That's Tanisha, sorry, by the way, you don't know. It's Tanisha and her girls. See, she puts it in part. It appears like there's some kind of action over here, but I, I honestly cannot tell. It'll take off and she's gonna cut down there. Way over there. See her? And what she'll do is she'll turn back over here and about right here she makes a U-turn so she can go out by the security gate. Now, why is that important? Well, what did she stop for? Everybody needed to get home to their kids. Remember, go pick up their babies and whatnot. Now, at the same time, you'll see some heads coming this way. I think it's here and here, which is going to be the three late ladies. And then a, few, a minute or two later, then it's going to be the five guys <coughs> that came with uh, Jarvis and his group. And I'm, I've watched it, and it, it matches up, you know, from when they're walking out here to it matches up to there they are. Those are going to come. What was that? Let me see. Uh, let me see. Then watch so much of this parking lot footage go on blind. Um, just make a U turn right there. My assumption is 
one by the time. Not right here, but when she went over here, then she stopped and she talked to the five guys. Because they are all friends with them in that family and whatnot. Um, the guys and two by are pretty close. But that's where my problem comes in. Because what was she doing when she stopped over here? See what I'm saying? Now, I can flip over to the other camera and you can see where they're going to come in. Hold up. Okay, if that was her, them that that Tenacious vehicle stopped to speak to them. Should I say the people in her vehicle? That was at 3.11. Okay, now we're at 3.13. Okay, 3.13, 3.13. Hold on just a second. Alright, sorry about that. See, y'all just don't know. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes collaboration going on between you, some YouTubers. Alright, here's the five guys. See? 1350. Now, while Trail's on the phone, and this is Jarvis right here, if y'all don't know. And then yeah, I got John John. And I forgot the other two guys' names. I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna front. <clears throat> I took these allergy pills earlier. So my brain ain't gonna work all the way right now. But see he's calling to find out. I'm I'm assuming you know the room number or whatever. Okay, all right. Now, y'all remember when I showed you these screenshots in the other part of the video that were comments during um, TY's live? We got Chester Mob Ron, where he's making fun saying, Pass me my car keys and my weed. Then you have Von Trail and John John. A couple of minutes into TY's live, they were hitting him up. And we heard TY say, John John, what you doing? Something like that. What you, what's on, what you on or something like that. So these guys were calling him to find out about the party, whether he invited them earlier or whatever, whatever the deal was. So now they're on their way to come up to the hotel to be with their homie T.Y. at the party. So, we got them coming in at 314, but they stop and they talk, I believe, to Tanasia. Now, let's track them and watch what they do. All right, it's 314.10. Speed it up here. Here they come. I think I showed y'all this on the other one. They walk to about here and turn around and go back. Mind you, Bontrell's still on the phone the entire time. Now they're going to turn around and come back this way. I'm assuming that they don't know they've never been here. And they're trying to get T.Y. to tell them which way to go. Now... Those guys walked off the screen at 16.08. Now watch the time. It's going to jump right before they come onto the screen. But the time that they should be on the screen, I guess they're so short or they cut this corner so fast, so close, 
the camera doesn't pick them up at all. So you jump a minute. Now it's fixing to be 316. Balls, balls are walking in. But you never see the guys. That's how short they are. I, I guess they didn't walk out this way far enough. They had to pass a security guard if they went this way. There she is. All right. Now, so they went upstairs or went in that direction about 316. The lives are all over. Tunisia and them girls left, but we still have what, what do we count? 45 people, including the next couple that's going to be coming in. Okay. Now, let me set this up for you while we're waiting on Moni for them to come walking through here for the first time. During this time, from the time about 3 o'clock till, you know, uh, maybe 3.15 when Kanika went missing. This is the time that Chalo, Irene, Sakara are picking on Monifa. Even though she says they weren't picking on her, they were picking on her. Now, you got you got Kanika past, you know, half ass drunk, whatever you want to call it, laid out on the bed. And she's saying, Sakara, leave her, you know, quit being mean, according to Sakara, according to, to the girls, that they were, every time Monifa would, would pass by them or speak, that they were clapping back at her. So they were really getting on her. This is also the time that we got Kanika fell into the lamp, things like that. Now, mind you, the reason why I'm saying that it was during that time between 3 and 3.15 is because of who mentions it in the statements and who doesn't. Okay? The Vice Lords and all them, they didn't mention it. The Wilsons, they didn't mention it. They... It, Tunisia and them, they didn't mention it. It was only Irene and them. So there's a, there's a little transitional period from when that group leaves until this second wave of people show up. When I say second wave, I mean the Vice Lords, the Wilsons, um, the other three guys, the five guys, the other three girls, all of them. That's what I'm calling the second wave. Um, but what I'm noticing is that the things are getting wilder. Listening to all the posts and comments and lives and stuff that's happened over the last three years. But it doesn't start until after three o'clock. So we have to ask ourselves, what happened at three o'clock? Well, we know Tanisha and her girls left. And a few minutes... So many minutes after that is when Monifa got Kanika up off the bed and said, come on, let's go. Now, that I believe is when it really got kind of, here they come, when they got kind of like really, really, you know, picking at her and stuff. Because even though Monifa doesn't really know T.Y. in them, I don't see Irene and them acting that way with them still there. Because they're the ones that like to run shit. Does that make sense to y'all? So, knowing them all the way that I feel like I do over these three years, Irene, Sakara, and Chalo waited till Tanisha and them left. Trevante left. Smiley and her, her two left. This was all like it, right at 3 o'clock. You know, they, they came downstairs and waited a while, but, you know, they were all gone. Okay. And then we got one more thing I want to show y'all. Now, it's going to be 419. This is the first time that we're going to see T.Y. 
since his life. Mind you, his five friends showed up. He didn't come down and, and greet them and take them up. He was on the phone with them, letting them kind of wander around, finding their way while he was telling them on the phone or whatever. Now, remember, don't forget, this one's here, supposed to be hooking up with some dudes later, her and Irene. Like I said, I don't know if this one was supposed to be a part of it too or not. But this is the first time we see these two guys since the lie. Okay? So what does that give us? About an hour and 15 minutes from the time Tanasia left until now. Right? Alright. During that hour and 15 minutes... One thing's for sure and two things for certain. No matter where it was at, this video, Snapchat, took place. One. Brother. My shit just started popping. Big ass, big bro. You from the same house? I got my baby. I ain't gonna leave my stuff. Now, I have always wondered who that is in the background singing like he ain't got all his marbles. Now, who do we have in here? We have Timothy Delaney over here who was not at the party. Tanasia, T.Y., they were at the party. This guy, I don't know. He wasn't there. But we have Dominique, she was there. Jazz was there. Alexandria was there. And then we got the other two guys sitting over here that were not at the party. Brother. My shit just started popping. Big ass, big bro. You from the same house? Look at my baby. Yeah, I ain't gonna leave my stuff. I'm gonna leave my tea. Now, let me show you this. How do I know that this took place then? Watch his phone screen. Come on. This is a software program that I've, I've mentioned from time to time that I can take the videos and go micro frame by micro frame. He's jumping around too much, I guess, because I'm recording it as I was doing it. I got a screenshot here. <clears throat> See his phone screen? That's his live that he just ended right before 3 o'clock. This is how I know that whatever, wherever this is, took place after his live because he's sitting there watching it and editing it or whatever he's doing to it. I don't know where they're at. <clears throat> now, they don't have all the females with them. Because, um, who is it? Al Alexandria's sister? 
and one, two. Is it just Alexandra's sister? It's missing. But then you don't see the other guys with them either. So that would tell me that the guys are still at the hotel. And that, uh, the other girl either is having to do something. I don't know what. But the other thing we need to keep in mind is this is um, September the 9th. We've seen in those other pictures on the 10th, he was partying with the other guys, still dressed in the same clothes. And on the 11th, he has to be in Wisconsin in court that morning for those uh, charges that he was looking at a possible 37 years minimum. Okay. All right. For those of y'all that think I've lost my mind saying, how did he leave the hotel? without being seen or whatever. Well, my answer for you is going to be the same as my answer for how Cousin and Dorian left the hotel without being seen and how Jada and Torres came back in the hotel without being seen. And although I do feel like there are large portions of the footage that has been deleted out I do not think that those parts are any that were deleted out as far as those guys coming and going I think they did what they're used to doing even though in this situation, maybe they didn't need to do it. But just like we saw with Kenneth Tart, and I really hate bringing him up because I know all those other people that still believe that he was involved is going to stir them up. But that's what he was doing that night, the week before this at the Marriott Hotel. They were sliding in the side doors. Now, here, if you don't know where, where you're at, the lobby's right over there. The elevators are there. The gift shop's right there. This takes you out to the VIP parking or the, the circle around parking. Now, I've studied these doors from the inside and the outside. I do not think that they have a key card that you need to use to get back in and out. Look at that right there. I just now caught that. So the doors, at least that one, doesn't close all the way unless you push it. So now I'm really convinced that it's very, very easy to enter and exit out these doors. But even if they were to have the, the key lock, like most hotels do all they gotta do is text or call their buddy to come down and open the door and, and all, it's not to hide from anything it's just from saving to, from walking all the way around really now we have other ones too down here that I've shown before as well That's your emergency exit right there. That takes you straight outside on the side of the building. And I can show you where that's at. And then that doorway right there, I can show you where that takes you to. Let me show you outside first.
go go Johnny go Johnny go now mind you nobody knew oh yeah for those oh, go back for the ones that's missed it in the other times that I've taken a little ride over here I always try to point this out just for your own knowledge sake those of y'all that care to research and study details you need a pin security code to get back that way there's another door on this side opens up to this way so it's not just any Tom Dick and Harry stick goes in now Don't let me out the door, I gotta jump out. Let me in. Come on. Y'all could have let me out the other door, haters. I'm trying to see if that new camera's on this one. Or if it's just on the other one. I guess it's just on the other one. The other application is what I'm talking about. Oh, y'all ain't gonna let me off that damn door. See how y'all are. Oh, you can push a button now. Now I'm gonna go this way. Y'all ain't gonna let me go. Y'all just hating little mothers, ain't y'all? Go. Oh, I didn't say throw me out in traffic, bitches. Well, I gotta go around the block anyway. Alright. For those of y'all that don't know, this is where the protesters run up and down this road here. That's still right there is where you turn into that's the little thingy to get your ticket that says about paying the two hundred dollars there it is right there where we're going is around right there to that other side Where Teresa did the news interviews and Andrew Holmes did his little speech and stuff was over here in this parking lot. Push. See the doors now you might say oh those face a different way or whatever I know let me show you in a minute actually one of my videos I did with the maps back before we got limited on what we could move around because of all the public harassing the hotel. I was showing all the little. Let me go up a little bit more. All the little ins and outs. Here we go. See right there. That's right there by the elevators. See the door. Can't get you any closer. It's underneath the pipe that goes like this, if y'all can't see it with the cell phones. I'll just do that, okay. Count from the top. It's 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. The one on the end is 924. This is 926. 
when we have those videos where people are walking to the ends of the hall and looking out the windows, they look out this one and the one on the other end. And if they looked out their window, their view, probably pretty much blinded because this shopping center has a bunch of bling bling flashing lights all night long. That's what we see in the parking lot camera. I have yet to figure out what this is. I'm thinking that it might be some extra, oops, plump, uh, what do you call those machines and stuff that you use for the pools and stuff, but that's kind of far away, but I don't know. I can't figure out what it is. It looks like a damn bus stop. Oh, come on. It looks like a damn bus stop, but it's not. And for those of y'all that were believing that the cars were pulling in right here, I can pretty much guarantee you if they tried going through that concrete wall, they would end up like Jalen Ford's car. There's that doorway right there. There's the access to the rooftop. And this is the other window that I was talking about. They look out. Now, I've tried to figure it up on the maps, like a given distance of how far would they have gone to be able to come back, you know, in that amount of time. There are quite a few places around here that's actually 24-hour little restaurants. I was surprised. Now, this always seems to be closed off. You can see it. I can't zoom in anymore. But right here on the tip of the building, the corner sticks out like that. That's your camera for your your parking lot here. The freezer cooler freezer combo is right in this area. It's hard to pinpoint it with it being at an angle right here. But we see the girls come back and forth when they went to go look around in the parking area, parking lot, garage, whatever. Um, let's see if I can zoom up. There we go. Come on. Right, here's where that camera was. Of course, these two semi-trucks weren't parked there. So that gives you an idea also how much area, that, you know, we kept seeing cars go this way to park or whatever. And our view of sight was like right through here and then we could start seeing this area. But we couldn't see this area at all. And then coming this way, we would see something like this. So we weren't seeing this outside edge at all. We could see car lights to kind of give us an idea. And this is that security booth. So they were coming down, whether they used this way or this way, they were coming down and they were doing the U-turn to come out like that so they could leave. Okay? Now, the other thing is, you see, put a let me drop down in there. I want to go inside. Good. That's what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. Come on. Snap. The other ways that they can go in and out. 
is right here. Which I showed y'all in another video. See that? Now your pool area is over here. Now I don't think it's so easily able to come in and out without being detected there because they don't want that pool area just so easily acceptable. But I know this door you can because when they were protesting, cops were standing on the inside of that door to prevent people from coming in that way. And they were also standing inside of this doorway. And then down here. Don't let me go down. That won't let me go. I know y'all ain't gonna let me walk down that thing. Now why y'all front? Right here they were standing blocking this doorway from the inside and the protesters they came around through there. The cops were standing there but they didn't stop them. And on that one footage, our video live from one of the protesters, that's when I spotted there's a camera right on the other side of this exit sign. Never been mentioned. Now, we've seen it here playing around on maps, but we just always assumed that it was a new one, like the new one that they put outside the lobby. But since it was here during the protest right there, that means that's another camera that there's missing footage from. For those of y'all that are curious about the parking tickets, see there's a little ticket, you put it in there. Says, overnight guests, please see front desk. Non overnight guests, I don't know what they says there. And but the first one, oh, it's a scan something ticket, and then it says number two says scan parking ticket, and then number three says pay with cash or credit card. Number four says insert parking ticket at booth. And over here, zero to 12 hours is $20. More than 12 hours and overnight is $24. All guests, oh no, all buses and trailers, please see front desk for permit subject to towing lost ticket pays two hundred dollars all tickets returned that's what it looks like it says and they take coins bills and credit cards not in use please press the button before returning to your vehicle no cashier at the exit so that means you gotta handle it here. They give you another little ticket so you can put it at the booth out there. Okay. All right, this next part, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on it. I just wanna hit the highlights. I'd rather make another video where I go into all the details of it. But what you're gonna see here is 419. We're going to be playing patty cake. And Monique is at the front desk. She's asking about, you know, about seeing the footage or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. T.Y. goes and talks to the old boy for a little bit. Security comes down. It's 420. Now, at this time at 419, Dorian goes down the elevator, turns around and goes back in the elevator. He goes back upstairs, then he's going to come back down at 
431, 432. He makes his little lap. Let me pause that. And around the lower level, and then he comes back up at 4. 34, I think it is. He comes back up the elevator and then he goes out the front door at 435. Okay. There they go. This is when they're going to go down, do their little lap on the lower level. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into all the details on that. It's 425. They start to walk to the southwest entry, but then it looked like the guys called them back. I'm not sure. All right. It's 426. But I want to make sure I get this point out because I had a couple of people hitting me up telling me that T.Y. left at 420, that everybody left at 426, that, that you know, Irene, everybody, and that's not true. Whoever's given that information, which I didn't ask, but whoever's given that information is not given the, the full, complete information, probably because they don't have the footage. Okay. Okay, they're going to go down, they're coming back up. It's going to be 426, and you are going to see them walk out, but that doesn't mean they left. I just want to hit these highlights so I can show you what I'm talking about with people that, besides Cousin and Dorian, that, that we don't see re-enter the building and stuff, but we see them leaving again, things like that. Okay, it's 426. Now they're going to walk out. What they're going to do is going to go around the parking lot. And the girls are going to come right up behind them here. She's going to tell somebody, hey, where's this parking lot? And then they go out that way, okay? I still got the parking lot up. Yeah, but that's at four twenty six there. So that's the time we saw him walk out the front door, okay? This is how I know that he's walking around the building. Why? I don't know. When they were already over here by this door, maybe, I don't know. Maybe the girls that they were meeting up with were coming in this way. I don't, I mean, I can't read all their minds, but. That's just like with T.Y.'s um, live. Everybody wants to say he was zooming in on Kanika. He was tunnel vision on Kanika. No, he wasn't. When we see him editing his stuff, I don't know if it was then or if it was later, but before he re-uploaded it on the 13th of September, he did edit it. And wait, there they go. Okay. Now, oops. You didn't catch that. That's Patrick and the three girls, but it's not T.Y. Um, what was that? What I was going to say is that, um, From what I remember hearing in, in I don't know, somebody's lives and stuff, and they're talking, just conversations, some of these friends, whatever, through, through the last two years, um, was that before he re-uploaded it, what he did was he wanted to make sure that the public saw that Kanika was fine when she was in the room with them. There's Patrick, and these are those three girls, okay? I don't think T.Y. is walking like real close to the building. Does, that wouldn't make sense because he doesn't seem like the type that's hiding for nothing. Okay, now we're at 433. 
There comes Monifa, the other two girls. Now, see, we never saw them cross over to go look. So we don't know if they come down that alley over here on the side of the building or if they just walked up close to the building. We don't know. All right, we're at 434 now. Oh, I missed it for y'all. Sorry. This is, to me, a very important part of the case. Everybody's free re called Teresa at 434. And Monifa was in the background bitching and complaining. Wrong. Wrong. Okay, we're at 48 seconds. She's way ahead of them. It was at 48 seconds. Now when she gets here, when Boobery and them get here, let's see where it's at. Because it's like a good 30 second space. All right? So it's a good 30 seconds space in between their walking. Okay? Now watch this. If I remember correctly, both of them look like they're on speaker phone. Watch. Because their phones would be lit up and see how they're lighting up. And they're holding it close up to but they're not holding it to their ear. That's Maya on the far end. So maybe that's when Maya called her. Nope, there's Freebreeze right there too, see? So there is no way in hell that they heard Monifa saying anything being that far ahead. And if I believe what I've read, <clears throat> the youngest Wilson brother said that it was um, Shamaya that was saying that. But that Brie was in a bad mood the whole night. So... Either way, I don't care who it was. It wasn't Bri Bri it wasn't Monifa that they heard say that. So somebody lied on Monifa. Now, we're at 434 outside the parking lot. So let's jump to 434 up in here. That is the person, the guy that's in transition to being a female. The other one in the pink shirt is Melissa. She's a female all the way. Okay, we're at 434. Now, we got Chalo, Sakara, Irene's already out the door. There goes Arnisha. Nephew, Torres, that's Irene's baby daddy. Little Ty. And this is the one I call J Dub off of his Facebook name because I don't know his government name. Okay. These two guys are going to be seen exiting the building again, but we don't see them coming back in. And it's 434. Okay. Pause that. About 4:33 right here. And I think we already missed the girls coming in. I don't remember, I forgot. But I know all that they come, okay? And right after them is going to be T.Y. and Patrick and those three girls. So they did not leave at 426. It, and you see the girls are still running around. Now the girls are going to walk around looking like in the towers and stuff. And then they come back down a little before 5 o'clock. They sit down in the lobby for a minute. And then they go downstairs, there they come, see? They go downstairs, and they make a loop downstairs, and then they come back out, and they leave at 5 o'clock. 
uh, Patrick's on phone there. You see, 437. Now, we can watch them go up the food court hall, but basically they go upstairs to the room. Okay? And we don't see the other guys come in. Now, I'm going to jump ahead. There's Dorian going out at 435. He just come up from the lower level in the elevator. He's going to go catch up, trying to find where everybody's at, because he don't know where he's supposed to be. Comes back in, it'll be 438. He goes back upstairs to the room. No, we don't have the footage to see that, but it takes a little bit of common sense. See, he didn't cut down the food court hall, so he must be coming into the elevator. Those are just guests there. Oh, and by the way, every 30 minutes the shuttle comes. So that's why you'll see people sitting here waiting. And sometimes you'll see that if the concierge is working, they'll go in and out. He's checking the shuttle to see if it's out there. I sat here literally and watched it one time and timed it for a couple of hours. And yeah, it's every 30 minutes. Now the girls should be coming back. And Monica should be, that's the concierge right now. He's coming on for his new shift. Now at this point, Kanika's already missing and is wherever she's going to be. So the guy in the red jacket didn't do diddly squat. Yes, I do believe Kanika did wander back out of the freezer. That's my personal belief. I can't prove it other than knowing that the footage is deleted. And that's the only reason why I could see why it would be deleted from that section of the footage. But... That's been over, what, an hour, hour and a half ago? I think the brain swelling got to her. He went around and got himself a cup of coffee is what he did. It's Gary's getting some change to get some coffee. I forget which one it was. Come on, girls. There's the girls. She's going to sit down. She's going to stand up. She's going to trip over the little table, turn around, come back out this way. They start to go this way, then they're going to end up going down that way. They come back. Monique is carrying her shoes. They go downstairs. They're going to do their loop-de-loop. -loop. Then they come back up. When they come back up, they hook up with Bree Bree. Because at this point, I don't know where Bree Bree's at. She's off camera. They hook up with Bree Bree. They take off at 503, 504 down the southwest entry at 508. You see them in the parking lot. Take it off. Like Miss Jackie said, like that's out of hell in her video she made a long time ago. Now, see, they came back up. Now they're going to go that way. Now we're going to skip and jump and hop. Five thirty in the morning. Morning shifts coming in. Now there you go. Who do you see? Patrick, the three girls. T Y is already at the desk. Okay, he went too fast for me. We didn't see these two guys come back in yet. They came back in. They had a four on three or something. Dorian still up there, passed out because the girls were too much for him. I don't know what. He got his birthday goose or whatever you call it. Okay. Now, they're going to take off. Now, they all left at 531. He takes off. 531, 50 something, right? Let's get rid of you. Shit, Sam. Press forward. Oh, it's not going to be on this one. It'll be on another one. Okay, so we can get rid of this one too. All right. Jump ahead to 530. When we saw them leave the lobby. 
Now, this is kind of interesting. I don't know what they're doing. See, I'm thinking T.Y. actually left the hotel to go get some pills. Because he was going to be getting these girls. He was going to be going to court. He's trying to get him all the love and he could get. Because he, he didn't know what was going to happen when he went to court. That's one thing about court. Even though you're pretty sure that they're just going to do a reset, there's always a chance that they won't. And in his case, there's always a chance that he'll fail his piss test. Because even though he didn't smoke, he could have got some contact smoke. And if that happened, well, then he's going to get booked right then and there in the court. So he's out getting, he's thinking about getting laid. I don't think he's out having to rape nobody, even though I do think that he likes dropping the soap in the prisons. But still, he's got to do for the guys. He's got to show out for the guys. All right, we're at 534, 535. It jumped a minute. What I'm going to be wanting to show you is, okay, there goes Patrick. They all come separate. There goes Torres. And then it'll be a, another minute or so before we see J-Dub come through here. I think he cuts through there. And then we see T.Y. and the girls, or one of the girls, I don't know how it goes, but they come from this way, which means they had to cut down that alley or they had to be hugging the wall. And the girls take off walking just like they showed up walking. There goes J-Dub. My memory's pretty good because I haven't watched this much, this part of the footage probably in at least a year. But like I said, I studied this stuff so hard. I see it in my sleep. I dream about this crap. Those are just guests. That's not nobody. The one I forgot to show y'all, and I'll catch it on another video, is when Jared Coley leaves. The one in the gray hoodie. He walks out with the girls. See, there goes that black girl with the limp. Okay? We never see T.Y. come over here. We just saw her meet up with those two girls. We're going to see the T.Y.'s white pickup. And the guys take off around this way. They go down. They go through the thingy. And there he goes. But what I was saying about Jared Coley is he stands right here for a minute when the girls take off this way. Stands here for a minute like he's watching what they're going to do or whatever. Then he goes and he gets in his car. His car's parked right here. Then for no reason, the girls come walking up. And as soon as they get about right here, for no reason, the time jumps for one minute. And his car disappears from right here. And it's just right here where he's pulling out. The girls are already gone. It's just weird shit like that for no damn reason. There's nothing that they could have possibly been hiding during that one minute. You know what I mean? So that's my thoughts on what T.Y. and the guys were doing. I still don't know where that place was at that they went. What I do know is that all the females were not with them. T.Y. was the only male. You can see it over here. And wherever they were, he was reviewing his live because you can see him right there on the screen. Hope y'all enjoyed this. I would enjoy some feedback. Let me know. Even if it's questions, even if you don't agree, I would, I would really enjoy some feedback and see how y'all feel about things. You never know. You might say something that trigger something else in my brain and we can put some more pieces of the puzzle together.